Hi, everyone in uh, North America, Europe, Romania, and uh, everywhere in the world. We will be talking about um, American popular culture, the impact, the lure of uh, Hollywood and the uh, commercial uh, cinema, and the big transformations, um, indeed, in disruptions of um, new ways of um, producing, consuming, archiving, um, uh, moving uh, images. Uh, we have uh, the pleasure to talk with director, producer, screenwriter, screenwriter cultural entrepreneur, uh, Tudor Giurgiu, one of the most um, uh, influential and visionary people in uh, Romanian cinema and not only um, Romanian uh, uh, cinema. His uh, influence and impact um, go uh, beyond our borders. Tudor Giurgiu graduated the National Academy of uh, Theatre and Film. Uh, he's a member of the European uh, Film Academy. He's the founder and president of in Transylvania International Film Festival, one of uh, the, the biggest in Romania and one of the biggest in uh, Southeast um, Europe. He's also the initiator of the GOPO Awards, uh, the Romanian Oscars, as as they are uh, widely known. He's also the founder and, and head of the production company Libra Film Productions and of the distribution company Transylvania Film. He was a general director of uh, Romanian national television between uh, 2005 and 2007. Uh, his filmography is quite wide. The list of his, the films he directed and produced is long and prestigious. And uh, let me flesh out just um, a couple of them. Um, starting with the, the feature films, uh, Parking, uh, Why Me, Of Snails and Men, Lovesick, uh, Superman, Spider-Man, or Batman, for, for which he received the European uh, Film Award, uh, Another Christmas, and uh, many, many other. Uh, Tudor Giurgiu, welcome to the program. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm really glad to have the chance to talk uh yeah in those times where yeah things got a bit crazy we are we are excited to have you as um as one of our guests in the leon ferraro conference series i'd like to start by uh, ask, asking you how would you describe the appeal of american popular culture and hollywood in general for so many people Oof. Uh, starting yeah. with uh, with the, with the simple questions <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes, you know, people do say that when when things are so obvious, uh, you should not, uh, you know, explain them too much because it's it's as you you would go in any place of the world and, you know, people would know about Spielberg, uh, people would know about, you know, stories from, uh, uh, I don't know, TV series, and and I think if we if we would just uh, trying you know to encapsulate uh, everything in 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 just a couple of words, I would say uh, that that the American popular culture is is so much about about fabricating, and I'm not saying it you know uh, uh, in in a way that it would sound you know bad or not good, but fabricating good stories. And it's all about, I think, storytelling. It's about packaging uh, the reality in, in, a, in such ways that those stories can relate to so many people across the globe. You know, it doesn't matter that you would live in India or in Romania or in Thailand. And I think that's the, that's the force of a popular culture across uh, years and years, because I think this was maybe the case. I'm I'm about to say, even though I was born in '72, so I'm not so familiar with the '50s, '60s. But I think, especially from the '70s up to now, uh, we were all heavily impacted, but by what has happened in music and especially in cinema and 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 in TV. 
how was the impact of American popular culture, not only film, but also uh, music, on you as, uh, as, um, as somebody who wanted to become a, a film director? I mean, first of all, uh, I, I was raised, I mean, I was born and raised in, in, in communism. And, you know, for people who are, you know, familiar with what it meant to, to live under communism, there were lots of, you know, things which were, you would not be able to, to, to touch, to see. Uh, I, I, I remember, you know, the, the, this great epoch when we were not able to see American films or, you know, films, great films from abroad. So yeah, right. the flight, the, the pilots who are coming in Romania from several international flights with the stewards and stewardesses were coming with the VHS tapes, with what's, you know, new on the market. So that's how we were able to, to see uh, the great American independent cinema and so on. But I think, I think we were, we were, able in a way to to develop a certain kind of mythology around some icon figures from the american pop culture just because you know we were either allowed to see one particular i would call it you know the famous tv series dallas which honestly i don't even know the impact which had on on in in, in us but in 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 romania and i'm sure in other it was big countries, in the us as well yeah. Yeah. I mean, that series, which for us was, you know, the, the epitome was the, 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 the only series which would have, have access maybe some years before it was Mannix or Kojak or yeah. whatever. But, but for my generation, Dallas was, you know, everybody was dreaming about having a wrench, you know, it was like, <laughs> like some kind of a, a, a certain kind of mythology, which was allowed, let's say, by the regime. And, and I think a guy, a guy even, even got it after the revolution. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a very nice documentary about the guy who built this yeah, Dallas ranch. Yeah, he built his, his Dallas ranch uh, in the middle of nowhere in <laughs> Romania, and then he got bankrupt and so on. That, that's what I would call the influence, the, uh, how influential the American yeah. popular culture was. And, and, and I remember for me, for example, I was like an important icon for me, if I talk about the American popular culture, is Spielberg and his way of, of, of delivering stories. Of course, he's a master in, in a, like in cinema and he's a great director who knows the craft of filmmaking but beside all his his master of uh, of delivering stories which can be understandable and people relate to them in in every part of the world and i remember being a kid uh we were not seeing his movies on on cinema so for a certain period of time ceausescu the romania's uh, yeah, number one figure uh, opened up or gave this opportunity to to have this video club video clubs in many in many neighborhoods in every city so uh, like some some entrepreneurs would would open up this uh, totally illegal in a way video clubs because they were showing up those vhs tapes brought in the black market but we were all gathering there and i and i still remember how i've seen et uh, the, the Spielberg's movie in a in a packed small room full of 50 people and we were all it was in a basement and I, I looked to this movie and I said wow I mean for me it has such a big impact and still you know years later I, I, I went to see an open air uh, screening in Bryan Park in New York and for me it was it, it, it was like a revival of my memories in the childhood and and I, I I was admitting that, you know, this movie, I don't know why, but it had such a big impact on me, uh, mostly because we were not allowed to see, you know, uh, contemporary movies from the 80s and it was so hard to see it. Uh, I don't know, let's talk about, again, I'm coming from a generation who was contemporary with Michael Jackson. Uh, we were not so much... Uh, you know, interested into what has happened after his disappearance and all the stories and so on. I mean, it was a music which, which was so big and he was such a huge 
uh, icon all over the world and I was among the the guys he, he he toured in Romania I think it was the day big first concert in Romania and I was like I, I remember it was my my first paid job in the industry I was holding some cables for a camera guy in Chicago who was shooting there so for me, I, I got my first 20 bucks in the industry, but I was like, wow, you know, attending the concert. So I think this, 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 um, these figures were really essential and, and important for us in terms at, at that age, of course, without knowing yet, uh, I would say um, we were not making uh, qualitative analysis about the role of X and Y in the in a broader landscape of uh, uh, it, 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 it was not time for 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 this kind of analysis. It was just the impact and the aura around the the, the persona, and and just to f finish this 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 um, idea about about the impact in Romania uh, when when. When I, I was thinking about about uh, yeah the the impact of the pop culture, I was remembering one thing which I was totally really ignoring it, but I, I was really fan of, of film since I was a kid, and it was a time I think maybe in between eighty one and eighty five or eighty six when the only foreign movies which were aired by the public broadcast in Romania were besides the usual Chinese Korean uh, films which uh, it was mandatory to show uh, we had a lot of black and white American films like all the big movies from 30 40 I mean starting from uh, gun with the wind Jezebel the films of William Wyler uh, Frank Capra and then later on Billy Wilder and and I was remembering this and I thought wow those movies again really, in, in a way formed my my uh, my culture in like a cinephilia culture even though it was it was yeah very very uh, somehow uh, I, I was not having access to some others like I don't know Fellini, Polanski, Antonioni those came later but I became an expert in Frank Capra's movies and I don't know <laughs> I, I fell in love with Catherine Hepburn, and I'm I, I'm still thinking that you know if I would ask now a teenager about you know their references in movies, I mean, or in you know falling in love about some actors, of course they would give me some names of uh, teenagers now which I don't even know who they are, and if I would ask them about Catherine Hepburn, they would say, oh, I mean, who's this <laughs> girl? I mean, it's 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 very complex, and I and 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 I'm sure you know. Yeah, as an individual living in Romania in a dictatorial re regime, all these references might sound, you know, funny or very particular. I'm sure in other countries uh, they are different, but it's obvious that there is an impact. And uh, I think all these all these personalities, works of art, uh, some films, whatever. Uh, made or you know in a way formed our personality uh, and impacted us a lot and what about music what about clothing um what about um uh you know sartorial preferences uh hair all these kind of stuff do you think uh, did they have um a great impact for me personally i think the impact was coming more from uk uh, mm -hmm. or at least uh when I, I became more preoccupied about these things, music, fashion, whatever, I was, I was the, the wind was blowing more uh, from, uh, from UK. But, but it's, it's, it's very true in a way that I, I remember my, my very first visit to US. It was 1997, I guess, or 1998. I, I had a scholarship in a, in a great program um, called ArtsLink. And it was a chance to, for me to, to, to stay and to work and to learn many things in, in, in Seattle, in an art foundation there. I was able to learn editing program and, and video graphics, whatever software. And I was able to also to see a bit of uh, New York and, and LA. And I remember that when I came back home, 
it was not so much, I mean, the, the impact on me was not so much about what I've achieved on a professional level, but what I've, I think I became, uh, I think on a very personal level, a, a, I wouldn't say a better man, but anyway, um, the 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 science the the in the in the in the image the the imagery the all the 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 visual science of like the daily routine you know spending the time in New York going to an art gallery learning about you know Andy Warhol and whatever his generation and many many other things I I came totally changed I was you know more interested in you know things or areas which before i was not even thinking about i i still it's funny now because i've seen everybody on my facebook wall is talking about the michael jordan documentary on netflix and it's so great and uh, i should see it and i remember that while i was there in us for those two months i did like the most stupidest thing which I did in my life, like you know, if there is one thing to pick, uh, it was this because I was, I was, I decided, you know, I was not having so much money, so I, I was really counting every buck, every penny, and I, uh, I was about to attend a basketball match in Seattle between Seattle SuperSonics and and Chicago Bulls. And I thought, oh, it's eighty dollars, and I thought, mm, should I give this money or not? And I finally I said no. I would, I don't know, spend this money on on cinema books and whatever. And now, you know, if I'm, if I, if I would be able to stop the time, you know, uh, going back in time and and do different, <laughs> uh, like in a Spielberg movie, I would really, I would try this because I, I, I feel I, I miss this opportunity of seeing like a master giant mm -hmm. over there. So again, he's another icon. How would you define success? What is success for you in, in films or in film promotion, in film production? I mean, I think it's, it's hard, to, hard to give a definition, but for me, the success is, is really related to, to audience, to public, and to to the to the, how much are you able to of course you cannot change the world you cannot change the society even though i mean some documentaries were really yeah. managing to do so especially in us but i think uh, there is no other satisfaction uh, than you know having people you know saying thank you for putting I don't know, such a great festival or coming or writing to you that they were influenced about a movie and they were really thinking a lot and they would try their, you know, daily routine to be a better people, like individuals. And I think this response which you get from, um, from the audience for me it's the it's the definition of the success you might you might have all the awards in the world you might have all the amazing accolades from, from all yeah. over the world and recognition but if this is not doubled by a um, by the by a public recognition it would be really difficult and we know i mean there are so many examples of, of famous uh, painters, sculptors, writers, especially who they were maybe not totally ignored, but their their uh, career in a way and their appreciation started much later, like post mortem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in cinema things are not as bad, but I, I, I know cases of, of, of films or directors who who are uh you know doing an amazing cinema but you know it's 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 maybe too hermetic or uh, uh it's it's widely acclaimed you know i mean i'm just giving you an example of an amazing hungarian director called uh, tar bela uh, his films are really most of them are like masterpieces but yeah his his uh, 
I would say uh, his aura and his uh, his positioning is really high into a very uh, narrow circle of film aficionados and and film students and film directors, which is great. I mean, he's a master. But um, I would say, for me, it's it's really um, you were mentioning a communal experience, and I I I would need uh, to have. A, a wider recognition because I think um, we are doing, uh, or at least that's my my aim to try to find stories which can impact wider communities in my countries or in other parts of the world. And I think it's it's really great and it's a wonderful feeling to to receive uh, your messages from. I don't know, whatever parts of the world, uh, people who, who, who say, yeah, you did a great movie. And I, I, I remember my, my very first experience in the area of feature movie films. It was a film called Love Sick. It was my debut film, which was a love story uh, between two <laughs> good girls in, 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 in Bucharest. And it, it was distributed and screened in, in many, many countries. And we got a message from a Brazilian girl who was so fascinated by the movie and by how Bucharest was looking like in this particular movie. So she came to Bucharest to make a vacation. She wrote us an email, myself and to, to the two leading stars. We met with her and I thought, you know, like it's, it's really great that cinema can, can offer such kind of uh, uh, yeah, experiences. And that's for me, the, the definition of success, and I think it's, uh, I it's it's really related to to the response uh, of, of yeah of what you're doing in in a in a, to the to the great audience and how our work is really making a splash into into several cultures. Uh you you of course have a, a long uh, long experience in not only in making film but also in uh, promoting film and distributing film um, when it comes to success uh, what do you think some films work better than others uh, what is the ingredient of that makes them um, or makes people want to to see them more than others. The great thing about about cinema is there are no rules, and I think that's why we are enjoying so much this um, this medium. And uh, uh, it's so fascinating to start every production, every project, because you cannot. I mean, you, you might guess how this movie would look like, but the journey is so long then. And in the end, you know, a movie can take, I don't know, seven years, 10 years from the very, like the, the, the inception, the starting point till the very end. So society is changing, the tastes are different. And I, I realized that it would be impossible to anticipate and to say, yeah, this story would have success or not. I, I remember a conversation with an amazing uh, German producer, like one of the top European producers. Unfortunately, he passed away some years ago. His name was Karl Baumgartner. And uh, I was pitching him some, some stories uh, for a possible co-production and he was stopping me at a certain moment and he said Tudor circus films don't work it was a movie about a circus and he, he says circus movies and airport movies don't work and I said come on like come on Carl what's this I mean are you are you really uh, you know it's a kind of a uh, thinking no 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 he started to give me a hell of a lot of examples and I have to say he, he was really true that you know, I mean, think about an, an amazing a blockbuster movie about the circus world. There is none. Or, yeah, with the airport, maybe it was all this catastrophe movies in the 70s, 80s, but not so much now. Maybe Spielberg did the terminal and so on. So th th there are these kind of uh, approaches which are very much coming, or they are coming from, from let's say, the, 
experts, from the sales people, from the distributors. For me, I think it's magic. Like you, you could not guess what's what will work and what will not work. Uh, again, another funny example. I, uh, it was some years. I mean, maybe more than 10, 15 years ago. A great German movie called uh, Goodbye Lenin. Uh, it was a yeah, it was a comedy, but it it, it made an, an amazing success all over the world, but especially Europe and France. But at that moment, releasing a German movie in France on a bigger scale and with such an impact would have been a nonsense. I mean, the Germans were not really uh, the the typical, uh, it was not the typical cinema which would, you know, get millions in the, in the French cinemas, millions of people. So uh, it was a screening of the, the, like the new German movies and it was a French distributor who was seeing this movie and he was the very, the unique one who said, I might buy it and he bought it for a really small amount of money all the others said no we are not in you see we, we do not believe in this movie and of course the, the, this distributor really made a fortune afterwards because <laughs> because sometimes i would say uh, even the experts are not anticipating uh, the reaction the genuine reaction of the people uh, in that darkness you know feeling or sharing the same emotion as the characters who are who are on screen. So uh, that's the beauty of cinema. And and for me, what's what's also strange uh, again talking about success and what's going, what's working, what's not, is is this question of remakes, which is uh, they they are so popular in Hollywood. And every time when there is a great movie coming from Europe or even Asia. I mean, I know that they are planning now a remake on, about Parasite, uh, the great Korean movie who got the Oscar. So wow. every time they want to do a remake. And I, I've, I've seen, I think last year, an American movie called Gloria Bell with an amazing Julianne Moore in the main role. Um, and it was a remake of a Chilean movie called Gloria. Uh, which got many, many awards. And he, it was a movie who was an Academy Award winner for the best foreign movie. And both movies were done by the same director. I really cannot explain you why the first movie was was much, much better than the remake, even though it was the same director. Sometimes I think it, it's, it's about um, that some stories fit better a certain, you know, momentum. Environment, in culture. environment culture. Well, they're the right time. They come at the right time. Yeah. And and it's also the fake, uh, the, the thing that, you know, a um, star is really not guaranteeing the success. So for the people who who are uh, making these judgments, oh, yeah, like, you know, like many studios are doing, like, who's hot now? And, you know, let's bring this actor or this. And, yeah, we'll... we'll it's not, and it's not really selling the movie, or the people are are not um, really into the the movie. While I think there there are there are also these preconceptions which I I, I really I observed and I, I felt a bit in a way attacked by by these preconceptions that some movies do travel and some others do not and it's here it's about uh, i'm i'm very precise about comedies again in in our industry there is this kind of um, yeah. idea or theory that the comedies sometimes are too local and they do not travel and that the, an italian comedy might not find their audience in uk which i found it's it's stupid it's hilarious i mean nobody has really the courage to try and I, I I did a movie, a social comedy of snails and men. You know, maybe eight. One, one of, that was the most successful film in 2012. You know. Yeah, and and that film, you know, traveled so widely, and and uh, South America, Asia, whatever, uh, Europe, and people in the audience told me that they they really cried, they laughed, and it was appealing for them. It was a story. Who was who could have happened in their country, but still, you know, we were not able to sell it 
on a bigger scale, mostly because the, the people who were in charge of the sales Which told uh, you the comedy contract. Were, yeah, they were they were really saying, oh, this is not maybe we should focus on some other stories because they would have had to work more to promote this movie. So I think, yeah, th there is a lot of hypocrisy in this industry, but there is one sure thing that we should not really believe in uh, in magic formulas or recipes of success because there is none. I'm sure about it. Although I would say that um, that especially in Hollywood, uh, stars, uh, remakes, uh, franchises are a way to mitigate the risks because film now costs a lot of money. Today, I'd like to um, uh, to ask you about your um, interest in um, in creating cultural institutions. I should say, so you have a um, successful career as a director, but you have always been interested in setting up these um, organizations. Why was that? Why why did you feel the urge to do something beyond your career as a director? Again, it's a it's a very particular story which deals with the with the facts, the historical facts of our territory. Because when when I finished the film school, it was 1994. Um, it was it was pretty difficult to make films. <laughs> make films because there were just a couple of directors who were both directing producers. They were using the state money to do their own movies. And it was obvious that it's a closed circle. While some years ago, the economic situation really was, was horrible. In the year 2000, it was a black year when zero. zero movies, nothing has been produced. So I've started to ask myself questions about, you know, what should I do? Like, should I immigrate to US to live my American dream? Or should I stay and, and build? And I, I don't know if I did well or not, but I did. <laughs> I went for the plan B, so to stay and build. And um, somehow uh, everything went interconnected because uh, I realized that if I would make a movie as a director, I would need a producer while there were no producers at that time. So in a way, me, myself and my generation were lucky that it was, we lived a momentum after the big political changes which followed Ceausescu's fall, mm -hmm. that nothing was in place and everything had to be re rebuilt or invented. Invented. And... Invented. So I've learned what it meant to be a film producer, even though I, I, I was not you know, doing management or uh, economic studies and so on. I did workshops and so on and so forth i've opened a film production company even though I, we did not do anything in our in the first years then i realized that you know romania is not having a big film festival where we could showcase our work we could invite influential people here to to really see our work and maybe we try to co-produce and uh, that's how to, you know transylvania film festival was 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 born and then we realized that we need uh, there is a strong need on the market to see these great films coming from all over the world, where, which we've screened uh, at the festival, but just once or twice. So we thought, let's, you know, do a proper distribution company who could give a life to those movies uh, on big screens or on internet uh, for a longer period of time. So everything, you know, went in a way logical, but it's it's true that. I think I was I was lucky enough to to be contemporary with this this amazing uh, years. I'm talking about the '90s, which were chaotic and, and right. difficult, but it was the it was moment. Full of opportunities, right? Yeah. It was full of opportunities, and if you would really spot uh, spot them, uh, yeah, uh, I I was I. I was not backing up or I didn't uh, say, oh, I, yeah, I, 
I didn't know what it means to be a producer, but I learned and I learned a lot. I read a lot. I've tried to travel to, to be inspired by others. So uh, yeah, here I am. And I'd like to uh, remind our viewers that they can, um, they can put questions uh, on our um, uh, Facebook account. Uh, we'll try to get as many as we, uh, as we can so that we, we, uh, we make this uh, conversation more um, interactive. Um, in I've your... seen there is I've seen there is somebody asking Andrea if Tudor could tell some fun stories about the music videos he directed. And uh, yeah, it's a very good question. It's 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 funny. Yeah, Andrea knows something about my background that again in um, I remember it was 1998, 1999, then uh, Romania launched its first uh, music TV channel and uh, named Atomic TV. And by that time, it was even uh, highly ranked in the preferences of the viewers than MTV. So Romania has its own MTV local brand, which started to, uh, to air uh, Romanian videos with Romanian artists. And it was a moment when the Romanian music was not at all uh, even broadcasted or even aired on radio stations. So, working there in Atomic and then doing lots of music videos uh, mm -hmm. in the years to follow. It was an amazing uh, period because I could have really done, uh, I, I learned a lot of working uh, on, on short formats and of course working with bands, uh, with crazy people <laughs> uh, from all kinds of genres. It was, it was pretty much uh, hilarious sometimes and I had, uh, I mean, we would not have now the time, but I, I, I remember, you know, shooting in, in Bucharest at the time, again, end of 90s, chaos. I mean, it was mm -hmm. nothing was reglemented, nothing was, there, there were no rules. I mean, I would, I, I could have easily blocked a big boulevard, <laughs> you know, giving, bribing policemen just to yeah. stop the traffic. And we were doing for a video, we were organizing some illegal car chases. Uh, the cars really bumped one to, into another in front of the camera. We, we didn't have insurance. We didn't have stunts. We didn't have, it was just, you know, the, the enthusiasm mm, of, uh, of, real of doing extras that. who were not even paid. They were just friends of the friends coming from block of flats. And it, 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 it was, it was an experience, which in a way reminded me by how the Italian neorealism was starting in the fifties or mm -hmm. yeah, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, very, with the social background, uh, very strong behind. You belong to, um, of course, uh, one of the most uh, successful um, cultural generations in uh, Romanian history. And I'm uh, deliberately using this uh, term because, of course, it's a film generation, a generation of filmmakers. But this generation of filmmakers uh, did something totally, totally extraordinary. Uh, and that was uh, really, really having a huge impact on the international uh, scale. Few other uh, Romanian cultural movements have had such a big impact. Uh, there are only a few and we can argue about, but definitely with the, the films that you and your colleagues were making, the prizes you are receiving, the, the, the doors you are opening, you, uh, you have brought a lot, a lot of attention to Romanian culture, but I would say to Romania. I know you have been preoccupied in the uh, in how to make the campaigns on behalf of Romanian films more effective, more in, uh, impactful. Uh, how do you think is the best way to promote this uh, uh, this very valuable, uh, very valuable resource of Romania? How do you how do you make uh, these films better now? I mean, um, the good thing about about good quality cinema is that um, those movies can travel and they do travel. Uh, and, and you know better, uh, we were lacking in, in Romania this kind of construction, this kind of uh, film institution, like a film institute, a film promotion agency who would have the, the knowledge and, and you know, the, the fun thing is that even 
these movies coming from the new wave were having their peak. Uh, this agency was not, you know, created, and things got worse and worse, and the support for for movies. Uh, was less and less, which is uh, pretty much bizarre. But you know, Romania is the country where Eugenio Ionesco, the father of Absurd, uh, was born. So but thankfully, RCI was there. Romanian Cultural but, Institute was but, somehow there. But that's what I want to say. That you know, the films can travel by themselves. Uh, and you know, I know that uh, there were earlier films from the the Romanian New Wave, like. Uh, the really small movie of Corneliu Porumboyu, 12.08, is the Bucharest, which was really a big hit all over the world. And I think the only the only sensible things which which um, you could do in terms of promotion is really uh, trying to to make a bridge between the creators the director and his team and the public. And I think that's one thing which, which Romanian Culture Institute did uh, really great because offered us the possibility to travel, to be in certain territories where our movies were launched. And it's, it's I think, another way, which again, you, 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 you did it well in terms of, uh, you know, institutional policy, uh, organizing, um, film events or supporting maybe foreign initiatives and foreign um, actions uh, or foreign individuals who would like to to do these kind of showcases and i think that's the only uh, sensible way to do it because i i know that i've been once you know if, if i could you know, move a bit geographical from US to Argentina. Mm -hmm. I've been once to... Uh, we are still in the Americas. It's the Americas. <laughs> I, I've been once to a retrospective, you know, new Romanian cinema there. And yeah, there were some people and some cinema critics who were aware, but mm -hmm. still, if we like about the success of new Romanian films, but still there is a big amount of people in terms of general audience who do not know anything or maybe they know just about you know a couple of names who are you know the the very established ones but they do not know about others so i think if we talk about promotion that's uh, the only thing which is really successful like circulation of, of works uh, inviting creators and because they are I think so important uh, to have the creators yeah there and then they are the best ambassadors of, of, of yeah. those movies and uh, I was really I, I read some some days ago I think a piece in IndieWire and I was really so happy to hear that uh, Alexander Nanao's film collective is uh, you know, seriously considered as an Oscar contender. It's an um, it's a wonderful documentary, strong, harsh, but it's it's really great to see that you know the, the Romanian films are are keep rolling, and uh, it it was not just the momentum around you know two thousand five seven, but I think more and more great films are coming uh, every year, and uh, it's great that you know you others are really. Uh, advocating uh, this cinema and uh, I, I think you are very right when you say that it's one of the best ambassadors of Romania's culture today. That's what we've always uh, felt. I mean, we, we, we are also proud to have been involved in the promotion of uh, Alexander Nanau's film um, in the United States. It was shown in New York and we, we contributed to that. Of course, how couldn't, couldn't have not uh, uh, contributed? Um, it's a it's a great hopeful. I, I think I think we should do more in what when it comes to the Oscar campaign. It's a very specific campaign, and I think uh, RCI and other institutions in Romania have a role to play in uh, setting up these uh, very specific uh, complex campaigns uh, that lead one film, no matter how interesting, no matter how well made. Uh, to the uh, to the Oscars, uh, you somehow have been um, a step, uh, one step ahead, or in in many respects. Uh, and now we are thinking of uh, the new ways of uh, distributing and 
uh, archiving and uh, and, and uh, consuming uh, consuming films. Uh, in, indeed, these uh, new uh, the streaming platforms uh, this, uh, are just huge and, uh, and tremendous. How do you feel about this transformation? How do how disruptive do you think they are? I I'm not so sure this this uh, consume which is heavy now uh, in in pandemic of, of uh, yeah everybody's on uh, streaming platforms and we've launched last year our our own and I'm I'm saying it our own is, is Transylvania Film Festival's platform called called Tifa Limited which I've seen recently that the graphics in the last two months and it's really like skyrocketing yeah. from <laughs> from a plateau in in January February then suddenly. Uh, Which is a good thing, right? For the planet. Good thing, but still, I think cinema is 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 a total different uh, thing in terms of yeah. How how would you consume it? It's a community experience. I I, I totally agree with with people from from Cannes Film Festival when they say that you know they were asking the media like what did what is the an online film festival. What's the react relation with the audience? How are the films are being evaluated? And so it's it's a total different thing. Uh, we are forced due to these weird moments to to rethink our businesses, even to rethink maybe some formats of, of like how how the content would be maybe told, repackaged. I, we, I, I understood a couple of days ago that even there will be limits for the size of the film crew for upcoming projects. So bye-bye movies done by 300 people, bye-bye <laughs> blockbusters. Everybody will do films in the apartments like in the main <laughs> uh... but, but, but still, uh, I think uh, after all this will be over, hopefully, uh, we will be back in cinemas and I think or in open airs or we'll be back in the festivals as they were designed because I think it's all about socializing. It's all about expressing joy, being emotional up to tears or, or you know, it's, it's, it's a total different feeling being in such environment than in online. Uh, I think, yeah, small disruptions can happen. Maybe some some people will reevaluate some genres, which maybe will will have to be, you know, recirculated. And but again, I don't think it would it would change a lot. Uh, everybody is expecting for things to to get to normal, and then the Marvel Cinematic Universe will start again in full force and the kids will be happy with the new icons of American pop culture and they will really be happy that Iron Man and Hulk are back and or at least my son is really really happy that this is. <laughs> And then not, not only, uh, I, I was also thinking of a long-term disruption, not only related to the, um, to the pandemic, the fact that, um, that some of the, the movie chains and uh, the, the traditional way of distributing film is at least what we see here in the United States is under strain. And, uh, streaming uh, platforms, the way that you can see you know, films at home in a very good conditions may have an impact on. Uh... Yeah, but I, I, I think we are, I think we, we are facing all these issues mostly because we live in, into such times when there is too many films. The content is, is really, it, it, it's, it's too much because, you know, it's in, in the last years, it happened such a democratization of uh, a filmmaking like you could do movies with your cell phone and you know yeah. you don't need uh, all these heavy sophisticated cameras so you know it's it's quite easy in a way to to make a film and to see it uh, on on big screen or on other you know streaming platforms oh, you broadcast and, yourself huh? yeah and this created this kind of a of suffocating amount of films and I think that's an issue which I cannot really 
I, I don't know how it can be stopped, but it's it's true. It's too much, and there is uh, there is another movie coming and another one, and and it's I I found it one of the the really the um, the most difficult choices now, uh, e even in a film festival or even on Netflix or in people. The first thing which people are saying. Oh, it's too much. What am I going to see? It's, it's this kind of feeling which I had arriving in an American supermarket in 97 or 1980 <laughs> used with the shortage of products, you know, from Bucharest supermarkets. And when I arrived there and seeing all those lines colorful with 30 brands of butter, and I knew two or three, like, how would I be able to choose among, you know, 30? So that's the same thing, which we Ain't are. No way. <laughs> yeah, it's no way. Yeah. So you just. Think, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, because you mentioned the pandemic, and of course, we are um, passing through tragic times, very difficult times. How do you see the recovery of, um, of TIFF, of the Fest, uh, Transylvania International Film Festival? Like all uh, big uh, mass events, it has been affected. Uh, it was postponed, obviously. Um, how do you see the recovery of this uh, fantastic public event with thousands, hundreds of thousands of people coming in? What's your, um, what's your take on that? I mean, I think, yeah, this year we might be able to do, I would say, a boutique edition, you know, smaller size with less films with maybe, you know, a couple of directors attending, but, you know, respecting all the rules of social distancing, a lot of open airs, you know, it's going to be very tricky, but we are optimistic that we could do it. But then nobody, I think, can predict what will happen. We are... We are playing like a chess game with an opponent, which it's 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 impossible to to guess what's the next move. Like nobody, everybody's so much playing into like a shorter scale perspective. Like you, I would be happy next year. Yeah, it's gonna be our twentieth anniversary, and we had. A, great plans in mind even from this year i'm i just you know can be optimistic and hope that you know things will be normal but i know that it will take time to regain this normality and for the public to be you know um, to be let's say uh, to feel safe into uh, to get into a crowd or to stay in line to, to see a movie or to be so happy that they caught a tiny spot into a 1,000 uh, seat arena full uh, full house seeing the last Christy Puyo film all those images which were common in Transylvania Festival now I really I hope we're going to be yeah, experiencing the same kind of a uh, same kind of experience, but yeah, it's the same kind of uh, images and and feelings. But uh, we don't know what will happen. So yeah, it's just a matter of uh, of uh, waiting and see how the world will 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 go. I think we can take um, a couple of questions i just land on this yeah it's it's about visionary producers and filmmakers who who inspired me and um i think there were a lot of producers especially who who i was yeah so much inspired of because sometimes you know the producers are are really staying uh, let's say in the shadow of the director so you would not know so much about the how the film was was made and i i remember some years ago i had an amazing meeting with uh, with a uk producer which was behind the mad max the last mad max and mm -hmm. you know i i I realized that, you know, being a creative producer, somebody who, who was involved into, into, the, into the putting together all this puzzle, it's, 
it was a, a I don't know, a, a process which took years. And uh, sometimes, you know, people are forgetting that, uh, you know, working on a such bigger scale movie uh, is really can take, I don't know, maybe a decade of your experience, uh, like a decade of your life. And again, you would not, you would not guess and you would not know that it, if it was worth it or not, it's just your, your inner feelings that you, you, yeah, you might say I will fight and I'm sure this film will, will be great, which yeah, hopefully, I mean, luckily this film was, and then it was another uh, pr producer, which I was recalling uh, it uh, throughout our conversation, Karl Baumgartner. Uh, it was it was a guy who was, today he might have been in Berlin, next day he, he was driving to Prague to have a chat or a beer with a great Czech director, then he went to Berlin and then took a plane to Kazakhstan to meet an amazing Kazakh director, which he thinks that, you know, he might do a great film. He was pitching the story in Berlin, finding money for this Kazakh movie. Then he was coming from Romania. He was, he was a maverick of what we call a yeah, maverick producer, somebody with a, with a great joy of, uh, of filmmaking and somebody who would, beside, I think, knowing the, you know, all the tricks and of, you know, how to make or how to find money for this project or for that and what kind of institutions or funds or whatever. Besides this, it's about the human contact and the, the stories behind this person. And the, for, for me, that's, these were the persons or the, the encounters which were fascinating for me because sometimes, uh, uh, if you would, I think that's the f good, nice, wonderful thing about this this craft and this industry that uh, you are surrounded sometimes by people with fascinating biographies. And uh, once I co-produced also a movie with um, with a Portuguese producer Paulo Branco. Uh, we did uh, the first movie directed by Fanny Ardant, great French actress. Uh, in Romania, it was a directorial debut, but uh, Branco is a guy who worked with Cronenberg with um, big names on international scale, but he's a gambler. I mean, for me, working with him was like, he gave, he gave us money and he, he gave us the opportunity to do this movie in Romania without knowing too much who we are, were we are we reliable or not. But all his career was a certain you know, f fall and then rise again, losing money in casinos and then making money with Cronenberg, convincing Catherine Deneuve to play this and that. And for me, I think that's that's the the beauty, the joy of filmmaking, which in a way, maybe it's, I'm not, uh, I hope it's not a, it's not a conclusion of an old man in this business, a veteran. But yeah, it's 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 a kind of joy. It's a kind of beauty of filmmaking, which is not coming from digital era. Uh, all these stories are coming from years and moments when when cinema was done on celluloid, and when it was really far more difficult to do a movie than now when. I, especially now in pandemic, I'm sure there will be lots of stories with uh, wait to see next year how many films were done uh, uh, like we were doing now our conversation. The film can be, you know, on air tomorrow. So yeah, <laughs> magic can happen even now. Somehow I feel that when uh, listening to you uh, talking about these uh, producers that you uh, admire, you, you have encounter of the directors that you, you like, you somehow describe yourself. So many, many of your, um, I don't know, many of your, um, uh, the, your um, um, what, what defined your identity as a filmmaker, enthusiasm, looking to the future, passion for these films are, uh, are all there. Um, thank you uh, to Dor Giorgio for spending this afternoon, evening in Romania with, uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you.